What's up, Northern Hemisphere? This is L Rock. Welcome to On the Journey 111. We are here to do your fall equinox uh, reading. So this is a general, timeless, intuitive, mostly oracle, tarot, you know, whatever. We're just doing a vibe check for the next three months for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere or those of you that this vibes with in general. Um, funny thing was the Southern Hemisphere's um, token, or I just did a reading for the Southern Hemisphere because they're in their spring equinox and the spring equinox popped out for the Northern Hemisphere's fall equinox reading. And it totally made me laugh when it came out. So I thought I'd share that with you. Hi, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you for your likes, your shares, your subscribes, your support of On the Journey 111. Um, as I mentioned, all readings are timeless, intuitive, and general. If this reading doesn't vibe with you, uh, you might check out the Southern Hemisphere. That might be your read. Or um, you can go to the playlist on the channels and there's Zodiacs on there. There's charm readings. Um, there's a playlist called readings from the lounge. There's the music lounge where I get music channels. Um, and so there's several, there's quite a few different playlists with readings on them. So there might be something else on the channel. And if you see a title that vibes with you, that might be the one you want to click on. So what do we have for our viewers in the Southern hemisphere for their fall equinox messages or their autumn equinox? The traveler, late summer. So you might be traveling here, uh, Northern Hemisphere-ers, and or this is also a journey about um, spiritual travel as well. Um, you might be doing astral travel, or you might be traveling, your soul might be traveling in sleep also. So this traveler one's coming through in multiple different ways for you guys, Northern Hemisphere. This is the energy of late summer. So, um, it seems like, so late summer is a time, oftentimes, depending on where you're at, that's stormy. And I think that Northern Hemisphere, um, perhaps you're getting ready to gear up for those winter storms. If you are in the Northern Hemisphere, but in the Southern states, um, you might be experiencing uh, hurricanes, typhoons, uh, monsoons, things like that. But I get a sense that there's stormy weather here. Also, if you are traveling, um, do you consider taking with you um, stuff for, for like a raincoat, you know, something like that? Something that something that you are going to be like, no, I don't need this. It's just extra space in my suitcase. And you think you're not going to take it because the weather is going to be this type of weather. Well, whatever this type of weather that you think it's going to be and that thing you think you're not going to need, take it with you um, because you're going to need it, apparently. Um, and so you might be doing some hiking also. Um, I'm seeing these footprints across the beach. Maybe you um, live near the beach, sand dunes, but um, that surf is pretty high too. Um, not super high, but the surf on that in the ocean there is high. The bottom of the deck, you have the hearth that came out for the Southern Hemisphere too. The Southern Hemisphere's reading was pretty interesting, actually. I've been using the Hocus Pocus tarot cards for my zodiacs, and I think I'm going to bounce off those because I'm not feeling the vibe with them. Like when I saw them, I was like, oh my gosh, the artwork is so cute. I love it. And I love archetypes and the hero's journey and storytelling and all of that. And so I was super psyched to get it, but dang, I'm just not vibing with the cards. So I went back to my favorite decks and we're working with those decks for these readings. But um, this came out for the Southern Hemisphere as well. And that's the energy of early winter. Now we're going into early autumn right now in the Northern Hemisphere, but this is that those indicators of warmth, home, um, you know, the sun, the dark season, uh, the sun goes down earlier, things like that. So really kind of getting ready to get your cozy on. Perhaps um, you're doing some spring cleaning or things like, or not spring cleaning, maybe fall cleaning, preparing for the seasons to come. 
Um, definitely somebody's traveling here. I, obviously, that's not going to be for everybody, but this map around the edges is sticking out to me. So do you see all these little landscapes here? Do you see the map, the uh, earth here on the sides? You see if there's something in there popping out. You're definitely going to a water source, even if it's not an ocean, it's a lake, it's, it's some kind of a large water source. Um, now that I've pulled uh, the hearth off the bottom of the deck, you now have the council there. The council is early summer. This is um, this might be a group of people here to counsel you, give you information. This could also be guides. I get a sense that these are humans, though. Perhaps a um, wow. I'm seeing like I'm seeing Simon Cowell. Uh, like honestly, like like people who are judges or people who like maybe you're in a competition of some sort maybe like a singing competition um and you are taking counsel from elders or from people who have experience that um are are overseeing you they have wisdom that you don't have and this council is there for you so um but what that's What's that show called? Is it The Voice? No, it's called America's Got Talent. Is that the? Uh, I don't know. I don't watch TV, so um, I don't. I don't really know. But um, the the face that my brain could show me in terms of what type of counsel it is. Now it doesn't have to be entertainment or talent, or maybe you're doing an audition of some sort. Oh, maybe you're traveling somewhere to go do an audition. Mm, interesting. So perhaps we have a performing artist, a musician, uh, probably a musician, at least one, if, uh, you know, like if singing shows are top of mind right now. But uh, interesting. So, so you are traveling and giving some advice. Next up, we're going to dig into the illustrated herbiary and bestiary and crystallary decks. This is a mixed deck. It's three decks in one. You can find the playlists on the channel. And uh, again, illustrated herbiary because it's plant medicine, illustrated bestiary because it's animal totems, and illustrated crystallary because we go to crystal medicine as well. So um, lots of different, lots of flavor, lots of earth flavor in this deck. So what do we have for our Northern hemisphere -ers, uh, for, oh, interesting. I've been getting this card a lot. Now it's coming out for you. Let's see what else. Oh, the card that I've been getting a lot is be inimitable. So be so unique that you cannot be imitated, um, Northern hemisphere. This is all about, this card is all about your individuality, who you are, the things that you maybe might be embarrassed of or that you think make you quirky. Sorry, I'm trying to grab the light there. All of those make you inimitable. That means that you cannot be imitated. You are one of one billion. So there are billions of people on this planet and you are like one of one right there. And so this is the energy of a celestial quartz crystal. And in fact, um, there's something special about how this crystal grows, but I've got a ton of crystals here. I've got this quartz here. I've got this geode here. Um, I've got a ton of selenite, really like light crystals all around here. So, um, you know, you might be um, needing to clear some energy, some crystals in your pockets might be helpful for that. Um, particularly celestial quartz. It's supporting you in your individuality, Northern Hemisphere. And then from there, we have Defy Gravity with Reishi Mushroom. So this is you um, making a climb that was probably not an easy climb for you. Um, you see the little guy there um, climbing up the mushrooms. I also see a portal. We're in a portal period with this being the equinox. Um, I know it's Ostar in the Southern Hemisphere, and I can't come up with the name of what the fall equinox um, is. Um, but uh, fall equinox, um, it's it would be the 
back when the earth religions reigned, the pagan, um, the pagan type. It's not pagan type. It is. It's. Um, I, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. I can't remember the name. If you know the name, um, then you'll know. Then you know what I'm talking about. But you're defying gravity and like literally anti gravity here. You are. I think you. I think somebody here might be doing. Um, astral travel um, in their sleep and or in meditations um, because that portal and the traveler, um, I think somebody's doing some astral travel here. So uh, that might be what you're being counseled on as well. Um, spiritual gifts coming online, things that are unique and individual and, um, you know, do this in a safe and comfortable setting for you with this hearth energy. Uh, we also had the crystal morganite come out. So morganite is speaking to that energy of filling yourself up, of, of taking care of yourself, of, you know, loving yourself, um, nurturing yourself. It's, it's seeing to what it is that makes your heart open and flourish. We've got the heart here in the center of this flower. And, um, and with all the Morganite crystals surrounding it, you see the, the crystals here around the outside of it. So, um, yeah, you're filling yourself up, you're defying gravity, you're traveling, you, your, your individuality is very much a center point here. This is not about you trying to fit in Northern Hemisphere. This is about you standing out. There's an old doc, there's a Dr. Seuss um, that I'm seeing in my mind's eye. It's the cat in the hat. And he's saying, why fit in when you were born to stand out? And that's what this is about for you, Northern Hemisphere. And you've got counsel, you've got help, you've got support. You're probably gonna be traveling for whatever this is. If you're, especially if you're a performing artist or a musician, um, you know, musicians, musical folks are known for being on the road. That's a lot of how they earn their income is through um, shows. So um, we have renewing your life with Sea Eagle. So that's a bird that's alchemizing energy that doesn't serve you. Sea Eagle literally flies up to the sun, um, goes as high as he can go until his wings catch on fire, and then he dives bomb dive bombs into the ocean. So you can see that rough water there and dives, dive bombs into the ocean. So he goes to the sun to renew, to alchemize all that crap, all that, that stuff that, that Sea Eagle needs to get rid of. And so it's renewing your life. It's renewing your point of view. It's renewing your vision, um, all of that. And so you are currently, this is opal energy, precious opal. You're envisioning the future. Do you see this? Do you see this broken shark up uh, the shadow of the shark here? Can you see that? Like I see a fin here, a fin here. I see a body here. I do you see the tail here? Another fin here. So this the shark is is broken up. So whatever this is um, with envisioning your future, it seems like there's been some shark energy around you. And that shark energy's crumbled. It's it's no longer relevant. That that sharks, it's been filleted for lack of a better term. Now it's still there, but it's not quite put together. So whatever the shark is, now I realize that that's supposed to be the reflection of the water, but I literally see it as pieces of of the shark, not the reflection of the water on the shark. It looks like the shark's been dismantled. So think of you know, sharks get such a bad rap. Sharks are cool. Um, but, you know, if you're talking about sharkish behavior um, in terms of how we have a bias towards sharks being aggressive, um, which they're not, they're just trying to eat, right? Like humans are on the menu because we're in the water. It's not, it's not personal, um, but um, this is the shark's been dismantled. Uh, for whatever that means to you. So, um, and precious opal is there. You're the, the is this a family? Um, in your, if you're traveling with your family, 
and you're going to Maui or, you know, Hawaii or to the ocean for a, um, you're going to the beach for a vacation and you've got your family with you, you're on it. And the reason why I say, is it Maui or is it Molokini? There's a place in the Pacific um, in the Hawaiian islands that's known for sharks. I want to admit it's Molokini. Somebody's going snorkeling. Um, be mindful of what's under the boat, right? Just, you know, just, I feel, I don't feel like there's a sense of danger. I feel like there needs to be a sense of mindfulness if you're traveling specifically to Molokini for a, um, okay, yeah. Mm, somebody needs to be mindful because this obsidian energy isn't coming through in terms of um, cutting cords. It's not coming like that's normally what it means. Obsidian, it's, it's sharp. It's sharp and shadows. It's getting rid of those things that don't serve you. But in this case, it's matching up with the shark, right? Um, a shark that's been cut up would be one that's been filleted. So maybe you're, you're eating shark. Um, but but in the shadows, which would be underneath the boat, right? Do you see, do you see these shadows here? Um, and a shark would have a rather sharp teeth. So be mindful of this, please. Um, this is a message for somebody. Obviously, it is not for everybody. Um, but sharp and shadows, you really need to be mindful um, if you're snorkeling um, in I'm seeing a crescent shape, right? Um, so if it's not Molokini, wherever you're snorkeling, there's something, if it's crescent shaped coral, um, I'm just trying to give you clues to what I'm seeing so that you can identify if you're in a situation where you need to be aware. Um, you don't need to be scared because animals can sense fear, but um, just be mindful. That's all you need to do. Um, also, maybe if you're a surfer, Maybe that boat is actually a surfboard. So just be, you know, have your wits about you um, if you're spending time in the ocean right now, especially if it's stormy. Um, you just, you know, it, you're just, you're in the water. Again, like, like humans don't take it personally. You're, you're in their house, right? With the animals. So yeah, pay attention. Something's up here, um, Northern Hemisphere. So pay attention. Um, this is a word of caution here. This is nettle energy. Again, nettle has a sting or a sharpness. So um, if it's not a sharp, like a bite or a cut of some, so ooh, be mindful of cuts in the water. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, but also I'm getting now, um, jellyfish because nettle is, has a sting to it and I can see those tails in the jellyfish. So whatever this is, just be very, very mindful. Um, scuba diver, snorkeler, swimmer, whatever. Um, if you're going to the Southern hemisphere, um, they've got those crazy microscopic jellyfish that you can't even see that like can totally take your life. What are they called? Uh, I want to call them Jumanji, but that's not what they're called, but you can't even see them. And they, and they're, they're crazy jellyfish. So, um, you know, what, whatever it is, um, take counsel, take heed. If somebody tells you don't, you know, don't, go swimming in that lake because there's alligators in it. Don't go swimming in the lake with alligators, right? Like use your common sense, take counsel, take the people who live there, the people who know, the people who have an understanding of the nature. If you're a city kid, you don't know what's going on with nature. You don't, you know, so take the counsel of the wisdom of the elders. Okay, so next, uh, I feel like I need to be really firm about this. This is coming through as a solid warning to me. This is very much about paying attention. This is very much about sharp and shadows. You don't see it coming and, you know, but you have the chance to see it coming. So envision your future as happy and healthy. Um, you know, the shark is filleted. So um, whatever that means to you, but um, just please be careful. Um, we have create space. 
So this is making space. You might be moving um, in terms of the idea of the traveler. Maybe you're moving to another state, another city, another country, across town, a new apartment in your same apartment complex, something like that. But um, whatever it is, you might be upgrading in the size of a space. You might need to create space for a new person moving into your house. You might be coexisting with somebody, living with somebody. So you're being asked to create space, clear out all that stuff that you don't need anymore, clothes you don't need. And um, because you are going through a renewing of your life. So um, with that, now we get into this, this energy completely different with this precious opal. With precious opal now, um, with envisioning your future and sea eagle, with renewing your life and then creating space and changing your perspective is opening up some, some space for you. So the cool thing about nuthatch is nuthatch is all about the fact, um, so be inimitable, okay? This is where nuthatch is coming in. Nuthatch has an extra toe. And so it has the ability to go, to go up a tree or to go down a tree because it's got this extra little toe. So it can go inverted. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe you're an acrobat. Maybe you do, um, I don't know, gymnastics. I don't know. Um, but nut hatch can go in the reversed position. And what makes this special is that nut hatch can hide food in a direction in the bark. So seeds, things like that, when it's storing up for the winter, we've got hearth, right? We've got that energy of storing up and, and getting ready to, to prepare for something. And um, changing your perspective is that what nut hatch has the ability to do is put seeds going in the opposite direction so that other birds that don't have that unique second that unique toe that allows them to go inverted and down the tree to hide their their food in places where other birds could never get it because they're completely inimitable they're completely unique completely different and looking looking at things from a completely different perspective northern hemisphere so um this is really this is really great energy this is all about the power of your uniqueness and so I love that energy. Let's see what the, uh, let's see what Patch Tarot has to say. What do we want to, uh, let's see what Sharp and Shadows is, Obsidian Energy. Um, that's funny. I'm like, oh, I, I, I'm like, I had an Obsidian in my bra the other day and I was like, do I have it there now? I don't, but um, we're going to clarify the <laughs> I'm oversharing, I know, but uh, we might as well get to know each other. If you're going to come by the channel, we, we should chat more, right? So um, sharpen shadows, the obsidian energy. Tell me more about that, please. Well, what's kind of sticking out for me is the, is the rainbow obsidian. So this one right here, um, if you have an attraction to that, you might wanna see if you can come up with a rainbow obsidian stone and just keep it handy. It helps um, clear out energy and, and toxins. If that shark is like not a shark physically, but a shark metaphorically, a human that's, that has ill intent um, towards you, Northern Hemispherers, um, you can use that obsidian energy to cut those, those toxic sharky cords, right? So if we're talking metaphor rather than literate, literally, then um, yeah, um, it would serve you to, to, if you're letting something go, it doesn't serve you to hold on to, on, on to it. It needs to be, it needs to be cut loose. And that's part of creating space, whether that's energetic space, literal space, um, there's no point in holding on to what doesn't serve you. So um, in terms of this creating space for yourself, letting go of clothes, right? Don't be attached to things that you don't need. Just cut the cord, cut the apron strings, whatever it is that you're creating space for. It's about envisioning your future and renewing your life. You're on this climb and you're filling yourself up 
with that morganite and that reishi energy. So that's part of you pumping yourself up for whatever is coming. We've got um, the lovers, which is marriage at the bottom of the deck. So um, perhaps you're traveling, maybe where maybe the travel that you're doing is for your honeymoon or for a wedding, a destination wedding or something like that. Um, you know, so so that that's really beautiful. Congratulations if you're doing that. That's awesome, Northern Hemisphere. What, oh, and I just saw the two of cups too. It flashed at me. It didn't come out, but. Um, let's find out more about obsidian. Okay, obsidian has to do with a very determined king of discs. Um, this is a person, a king of discs is very grounded, has money, stability. He's the one that you can really count on in, in the thick of things, right? Um, so with this is a sense of determination. So Whatever this, this king is a very, very determined. What is this king determined about Northern Hemisphere? King isn't necessarily gender specific to a man. Oh, interesting, hang on. So um, we have abandonment. This is the eight of cups in reverse. Now in other decks, um, the eight of cups in reverse is about a return. So, and that's actually kind of what I thought initially was that maybe that somebody was returning, but the guidance here is abandonment. So um, this sharpened shadows has to do with whoever this king of, this king of pentacles is, it's letting that go. Let's find out more about this king of pentacles. We know that you're being guided to bounce. Looks like you need to pray for their en endurance. Um, so with this, we have um, the way. The way is a holy card in the patch tarot deck. It sits above the major arcana. And then we've got the nine of wands. This is enduring. This is passion for something. So um, So with this King of Pentacle, Pentacles being determined and enduring um, and praying, I would say, um, tell me more is, let's see. Well, it's the chariot. So the king of Pen uh, the king of pentacles is moving in, and then there's a four of swords with a respite. I'm not sure I get this northern hemisphere. I don't quite get this because to me, the sharpened shadows is very much about cutting something off. Maybe you are the king of pentacles, and you just you know, whatever it is, there's a respite that's needed. Um, but there's, but whatever this energy is that it seems like you're wanting to abandon, um, it's determined. So, so this energy, hang on a sec. I don't have enough hands. I need my, my, <laughs> my Indian goddess, multiple hands here so okay so we've got the cutting of the cords we've got the abandonment and the walking away we have the respite here with the four of swords so it's taking that rest it's being overseen by your guides and then you've got all of this and so all of that has to do with this king of discs who's um you know it's the We've got the way, it's a holy card here. Um, and endurance, like really powering through and highly passionate towards what his aims are. And apparently his aims are yours, Northern Hemisphere, or her aims are yours, this person, this, this king of pentacles, because they're taking motion. And this isn't a chariot card where, you know, the, the, um, sphinxes are sitting there hanging out they're like full they're going man they're like running they're 
they're game on right there. So um, I don't really, I don't really get a bad vibe about it unless, unless this king of pentacles is your shark. So I, but I'm not, I'm getting a lot of passion from the king and I'm getting you Northern hemisphere as wanting to give it a rest, if nothing else, um, wanting to give it a rest. But um, there's some, some massive determination here with whoever this king of pentacles is, but only you know if this king of pentacles is the shark or not. I wonder like, you know, with that, with that, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I want to say, I wonder with that lover's card at the bottom of the deck, if that's not, um, if that's not my trip to Maui people or my trip, my, for, for whoever's um, going to be going to some great tropical destination for a wedding or honeymoon, um, this is your king of pentacles and you are the bee's knees in this king of pentacles world. So um, yeah, um, but I don't, but there's still this. So whatever this is, is there something that needs to be released um, for, for this apparently? So I don't know, interesting. All right, what else do we wanna clarify? Uh, pay attention, what are you being asked to pay attention to? Uh, loss. Okay. So we talked about that. Um, be careful in this, with this particular card, this card talks about these two people, um, kind of basically as a couple, um, but not necessarily. And that they just, that they've literally used each other up that they, this is the energy of Scorpio here, but they've literally used each other so much that there's nothing left. It's like just absolute complete and total loss. And so just pay attention to that. Um, if there's an energy of codependency where one can't do something without the other, that it's just, you know, that, you know, just be mindful, pay attention. That's all you need to do. What? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Yep. That makes sense. Okay. Um, I was clarifying the five of cups and the fool came out. So the fool's energy is about his potential, right? The fool came out upright, which means that he's willing to take risks, that he's willing to walk headlong into things. Um, but when things don't work out well, because um, the fool didn't pay attention, he walks you know, directly into the water. He walks off a cliff. He stops tapping into the greater field of consciousness here. You can see do you see how he's how he's tapping into the field? And so pay attention when you're tapping into the field about what you have the potential to lose by doing that. Um, there are well, are, well, I guess, I guess the at the end of the day, what makes the fool either upright or in reverse is the result, right? Because everything's a risk. And so you know, even if it's foolish, if you don't get caught and it was worth it to you, then it might've been worth it to you. But if you're making foolish choices and you're getting caught and or causing problems, then that's going to be your full and reverse energy. So just be, just be, just be, you know, pay attention because this, this full and reverse can, um, this is somebody taking unnecessary risks, somebody doing making choices, right? That, that not only affect them, but because they're recruiting other people, right? They're, you know, it's not just, it's in this case, it's not only the fool that loses, it's the fool that recruits and then fucks it up. So pay attention because if you're being recruited into something that you don't want to do by the fool, like out having a good time and wants to do their thing, you're going to take a loss because of it. So just be mindful. Uh, what else do we want to clarify? Uh, find gravity, clearing space, fill yourself, envision the future, renew your life. Uh, tell me more about envisioning the future and renewing your life. What is this? 
Mm, beautiful. The will of flow or the will of fortune. So the will is turning whatever loss that may or may not occur based on some, basically based on awareness of your surroundings, your situations and making good, healthy choices. Um, you've, you've got the will turning in your direction. So the sea eagle that alchemizes all of those things that have weighed you down um, and the will is in the upright position. Um, again, um, I made mention of the sphinxes earlier. We've got the uh, energy of the sphinx here. Are you going, are you maybe going to um, Egypt and going to visit the pyramids or something like that? Oh, beautiful. Oh, wow, nice. Woo, woo, woo. Um, we do have at the bottom of the deck, the four of cups, which is withdrawal. My nose itches, sorry. <clears throat> so Northern Hemisphere, this is going to turn out good for you. So you're doing a renewal. You're envisioning your life. You, the will of fortune is turning in your favor. You're digging into your spirituality, greater parts of yourself, um, higher levels of knowledge, of higher levels of consciousness, maybe traditions, things like that. Um, we have all the chakras back here. Um, and then bah, 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 the four of wands success. So you are going to do very well for yourself, Northern hemisphere in this next three months. Um, you're going to want to pay attention. Um, things can be avoided if you are paying attention. So, you know, if like this reading kind of pops up in your mind in some moment, you're like, Oh yeah, that reader on YouTube at On the Journey 111 told me to be careful. And now I'm feeling like I'm remembering her reading. Pay attention to that, right? Um, so that's part of paying attention. You don't have to necessarily see, um, hang on, do, you don't have to necessarily see the shark, right? Because the shark is in the shadows, but when you have those things, that third eye, right? And it's telling you, <laughs> it's telling you, pay attention. Remember what Al Rock said? That's the moment. Make the other decision. Um, and it'll probably go better for you. It will probably turn out freaking awesome. And why do I know it's going to turn out awesome? Because you've got a four of wands. So I love it. Okay, let's find out what you need to surrender in the next three months, Northern Hemisphere. Um, oh, oh, okay. Surrender your fear of intimacy. All right. Northern hemisphere, you are ready to let love in. All right. So, so is this, does this need to, um, does this need to be reconsidered? I don't know. You tell me, um, Northern hemisphere is this, that King of discs that, that you're walking away from, does that need to be reconsidered? Um, or have you done it because, because there's, I don't know, I don't know, but whatever it is, it's surrender your fear to intimacy. This, we talked, there's been a hint of deeper loving connections. We've talked about honeymoons. We've talked about weddings. We saw the lovers come out at the bottom of the deck. We've got the four of wands. Now you're being invited to surrender your fear of intimacy. So defying gravity. I'm getting that that reishi mushroom is actually um, that gravity that you're defying has to do with a block in intimacy. So you are ready to let love in, compassionately identify and begin to release any patterns that stop you from opening your heart. So um, be mindful of that because um, that could also potentially be the loss is the lack of intimacy here. So, um, yeah. All right. Surrender to miracles. This came out for the Southern hemisphere as well. So the Southern hemisphere be open to mirror or sorry, Northern hemisphere is who I'm reading for the, So the fall equinox, not the spring, be open to miracles occurring in your life. Feel and know that these events are real. Let go of any resistance and banish any doubt that miracles can happen. That's beautiful. So be confident because even if things do go, um, go awry, you can recover from it. At the bottom of the deck, we have surrender negative thinking. You have control over your thoughts. When negative thoughts surface, say thank you for sharing 
and quickly refocus on positive affirmations. So um, surrender negative thoughts, Northern Hemisphere. You're getting ready to go into the dark season. Do you enjoy your vacation if you're traveling in the next three months? Um, good luck with those of you getting married, going on a honeymoons, um, creating new connections. That's very, very cool. Surrender to your full power. You've got this Northern Hemisphere. So your life is calling for you to step into your full power rather than playing it small. And that's beautiful because that, that beautifuls is that full energy upright. And that's also strength. So and it might be Leo involved here too. Um, that Leo, the lion energy. All right, beautifuls. Thank you so much for being here. Um, if you want to go check out card definitions, you can go to the playlists. There's a patch tarot playlist, an illustrated herbiary, and an illustrated bestiary playlist. And then I'm still working on the crystal ones, but there's there's some illustrated crystallary cards in there too. Um, so let's see what else do I want to tell you. Oh, you can book personal readings and or personal life coaching on my website at onthejourneycoaching.com. And thank you so much for being here. If you liked the reading, please feel free to subscribe. And I am so honored to have had your time this evening. I love you and thank you for loving me. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you for being here. Bye for now.